Hello, cheapskaters. I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Cheapskates Club, where our goal is to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing. If this is your first time visiting our channel, welcome. And if it's not, welcome back. Today, I thought I'd bring you along as I work in the kitchen, getting ready for the weekend. Now, Friday is a really busy day for me between working on the website, doing videos, answering emails. I also have my usual Friday cleaning and you can find my cleaning routines on the Cheapskates Club website. And I do cooking and baking ahead for the weekend so I can relax and enjoy my day off tomorrow and have an easy day on Sunday. Now, I don't cook or do housework on Saturday. So our meals for Saturday are usually all made ahead and ready to just heat and eat. And being winter, that's really easy to do. We've got soup for lunch tomorrow, um, pumpkin soup. My version of shredded chicken street tacos. And so I'm going to be making the chicken filling ahead of time. And I'm going to bake some cupcakes um, just to have as a treat because I haven't done any baking this week. And if I get all that done in the time I have, I will be really thrilled because I have yeah, about an hour and a quarter. So let's get started. First off is the pumpkin soup. Now, I've already um, started, I've gone ahead and chopped up some pumpkin or got Thomas to chop up the pumpkin for me because it was really big. And I'm going to turn you around so... Close your eyes if you get dizzy because I don't want you to get too dizzy and I'm going to lift you down a bit so you can see what I'm doing. And there's the seeds. This is what's left of one of those great big pumpkins that Tom, uh, that Hannah bought down a couple of weeks ago. And I left them, most of it's chopped up and in the pot ready to go, but I wanted to leave these bits just so I could show you how I get the pumpkin ready to store in the fridge. Now we cut it up, but to get the seeds out, I use a trusty dessert spoon. And all I do is move the bowl closer so I don't spill it, put the spoon in and just drag the spoon through the pulpy bit with the seeds and scrape it out. I'm not using a knife, so if it slips, I'm not going to cut myself. And it's nice and clean and ready to go. There it is, done. It's easy to do. I can do it with this bit, which hasn't been cut up yet, but I will do the same thing. Put the spoon in and just drag it through. Oops, got pumpkin seeds. Now I'm saving the pumpkin seeds. I'm not sure whether I will roast them and will snack on them or whether I might try and save them and see if I can grow this particular type of pumpkin from it next summer. I might do a bit of both. But that's it. Then they get chopped up into smaller pieces like so. I've got a whole bowl here. And when I'm finished with this before I pack up, they'll get dusted with corn flour and vacuum sealed and put into the fridge. So they'll be ready to go for the next couple of weeks. All right, let me get rid of this bowl of pumpkin seeds and we'll keep working on the soup. Now in my stock pot here, let's put the light on so you can see. Is that better? Not really. I've got it. There we go. About half full of pumpkin. I also have... A jar of potatoes, my home canned potatoes, to put into it. And I only had one fresh onion, so we are going to be using dehydrated onion. Now, this is dehydrated onion from Hindustan. So I'm going to pop in accurate measures here, about a handful. That'll do. You don't need too much, just a little bit to flavour it, because sometimes pumpkin on its own is a bit bland. And I'll open the jar of potatoes. I'll put those away because I don't need them anymore. Open the jar of potatoes. Trusty can opener here. Now, home can potatoes. 
perfect for this sort of thing but they will need to be rinsed because there is a lot of starch in that water so i'm just going to zip over to the sink i'll drag you a bit closer so you can see hopefully or you'll see the back of me anyway at the sink and i'll give them a quick rinse quick drain and rinse and i'll get the colander out to do that just to rinse the starch off them. I have a bowl under the colander to catch the water. I am not wasting the water. That will go out onto the garden when I'm finished here or maybe onto the violas at the front door. Okay, and that's just enough potato. It doesn't flavour the soup. It just helps thicken it. And it's ready to go on. Now I'm doing this first because I'm putting cold water in and it's going to take a while to come up to the boil and then cook. And I don't want this video to last for 10 hours, neither do you. So cold water in to get it started. I have cold water in the kettle and just enough water to cover the pumpkin because we like, we like thick soups. Okay, I'm going to put this on the big burner. And it lit. Put the lid on. Turn it down a bit. Make sure it's centered. And let that come to the boil. Now, the next thing I want to do is turn the oven on to heat for our cupcake. Because I'm baking, I know it might seem like a waste of um, energy, electricity to preheat the oven, but if you are baking cakes, muffins, biscuits, breads, um, anything that has a leavening or rising agent in it, it is really important that it goes into a hot oven. The oven needs to be at temperature when that whatever it is goes in so that it will rise properly and fully but rise evenly too so oven goes on to 180 and there we go and while i'm doing the chicken which will not take long at all for the street tacos it can be warming up because doing the cupcakes won't take very long either and i'm going to zip you down again just so you can see um before anyone asks, there is no recipe for the pumpkin soup. There is no written recipe for the pumpkin soup. It is pumpkin soup, which is essentially boiled pumpkin, mashed to a pulp. So you saw what I put into the pot, chopped up pumpkin. I put some onion in for some flavoring and I put in a potato to thicken it or a jar of my potatoes to thicken it. Now, you don't need to put potato in. You can leave it out. You could use, if you don't have fresh potatoes or bottled potatoes, you could use instant potato flakes if you have them, or you can leave them out. If you don't have enough pumpkin, you could add some sweet potato or some carrots um, to bulk out the pumpkin that you have. But there is no written recipe, so don't ask for one because there's not. Just come back and take notes of what I've put in the pot. Cover it with almost cold almost cover it with cold water or if you have it stock I don't have any stock at the moment in the freezer so we're using water and away you go now I'm doing the street tacos in let me bring you closer so you can see there we go I'm going to do the street tacos in what's this thing called the pressure cooker already got it plugged in ready to go I'm doing a double batch double up cooking if I'm going to spend the time to do one lot I might as well spend the time to do two and it doesn't take any longer in the cooking process so I am putting two packets or two lots of frozen chicken fillets in the pressure cooker and I'm putting them in from frozen okay you can thaw them if you want to. 
I'm just adding five minutes extra to the cooking time to do this. Let me tip you down again so you can actually see what I'm doing. There's the trusty scissors. This will actually, it's double the recipe, but it will give me enough if I am very, very careful. It will give me enough for um, three meals for my family. So four chicken fillets into the pressure cooker and I'll get rid of this. I don't reuse plastic bags and back seal bags that have had chicken in them. The next thing is a roughly chopped onion. So let me roughly chop that onion. I only had one, but that will do. I'm pretty sure no one's going to complain because this has loads of flavour. And in it, guys, um, I need a can opener. I'm doubling the recipe so it's two large cans of diced tomatoes or four small cans. You can try using three small cans, but I have found that I can get the easily get the three meals if I spend the extra 75 cents to buy to use the four cans of tomatoes without having to stretch any other. Done it. Cool. Any other? Oh, that's so good. Um, let me get the. So I'm not wasting all that tomato goodness in those tins either. Now, I think I've told you about the Coles tomatoes. They have 60 cent cans of tomatoes, they have 80 cent cans of tomatoes, or they have $1.50 cans of the Italian diced tomatoes, which are the equivalent of two of the smaller cans. Now, if you buy the 60 cent cans of tomatoes and you're happy with them, then this isn't saving you any money. If you buy the smaller cans, then buying one big can as opposed to two smaller cans you save 10 cents. I know 10 cents doesn't sound like a lot. It's not a big saving, but every cent you keep in your bank account is better than in someone else's, I say. Okay. I also found that... Perfect. I also found that... Um, the more expensive ones, the 80 cent can or these $1.50 cans are much thicker. There's actually much more tomato and less juice in them. Now, all we need now is um, about two tablespoons, roughly, of taco seasoning. Now, this is the moo taco seasoning that I make up myself. Let me just pop a little extra in because we might like them spicy because Miss I don't like spicy food won't be here for these. I will give that a quick swish through. And I'm just going to turn it on. Easy peasy. Now, because these chicken fillets are frozen, I'm going to let them cook for about 30 minutes. Let's on move it straight so I can see what I'm doing. Power on it. Cancel it high time up to normally if they were thawed, I'd put them through for 20 minutes, but they're frozen, so I'm going to do them for 30. Start okay, that's set and forget. So great. So now we've got pumpkin soup on and it is warming up. The chicken's on for the shredded chicken tacos. 
I'll move these out of the way. I'm saving these cans because these are white lined inside and I have a project for these. So these can go over here. Uh, I will grab a drink of water so I don't run out of breath. And we can start on the cupcakes. Really easy, easy. I'm going to move you again. Really easy recipe. The cupcakes are so simple. Pretty much the one bowl recipe. Um, my one bowl cake. The recipe is on our website. I will put a link to it underneath. And I'm going to pop this away so that I can have a clear working space. Now, when I'm bulk cooking like this or batch cooking, I tend to get everything I need out and group it. So I had all the pumpkin soup stuff grouped, all the chicken taco stuff grouped. Now I've got all the things for the cupcakes grouped. Saves time. Saves me fluffing around trying to get things out and put things away and fiddle around. For me, it's just a much more efficient way of doing things. The only thing I haven't got out for the cupcakes is the milk. And it's on its way. There we go. Got the milk out. Now, before we get started, the oven is on. So I'm jumping ahead of myself. I'm going to put the papers in the tins, in the cupcake pans. And I just use my regular old cupcake pans. I'm going to double the recipe. So I should get good, easy two and a half dozen out of it because I am using, I'm going to use my ice cream scoop to fill them because these are cupcakes. They are not ginormous cakes. They are not muffins. They're not Texas muffins. These are cupcakes. When I was a little girl, cupcakes were small compared to what they are today. Hey, we didn't um, have this super size me, blow everything up, make it ginormous, eat too much of stuff that we really shouldn't be eating. Issue, um, you know, 40 odd years ago. So I tend to do that myself now. I couldn't find small, the small cupcake papers. They are really hard to find. Um, but I have these ones, but I'm still just going to put the one ice cream scoop of batter into them if I can get them out of the do the wacky what's it out of the pile. Um, can you hear the soup coming up to the boil? That didn't take long. Cool. Um, Okay, two o'clock, so I'll give it 20 minutes or so. Just cook the pumpkin down. The potato won't need to be cooked. It's already cooked in the jar. Um, and once the pumpkin is cooked, I'll turn it off. And I'll do another tray. Who knows? Might be able to stretch it. Um, I'll turn it off, let it cool a bit, and then I'll puree it with the stick blender so that it's all smooth and creamy and it will be done, ready to go into the fridge. And we will have that for lunch tomorrow. I might have it for tea tonight. Um, we'll definitely have it for lunch tomorrow with crumpets. I've already got the crumpets. And I've got a little bit of sour cream left, so we'll put a dollop of sour cream on it and some chopped chives, and that will be our lunch. Okay. I have enough. Nope, I've only got enough for two trays. And, oh, no, there you go. Three trays done. Beautiful. So we're getting enough cakes cleaned. I'll pop these over here out of the way. Okay, now, really easy recipe. I am doubling it, remember? So it is two cups of self-raising flour. I'll tip you down again so you can see what I'm doing. Two cups of self-raising flour. 
my handy dandy trusty apple green Tupperware measuring cups, two cups of self raising flour, two cups of sugar. Someone is going to say that's a lot of sugar. Maybe it is. Well, it is probably. But the recipe says two cups, so I use two cups because people baking like this is a precise science. The recipes are written with these proportions, these um, quantities, these ratios of um, ingredients for a purpose. So I don't fiddle with them. The pumpkin soup isn't, you know, a huge um, written recipe and really there's no, no baking in it, there's no rising in it, there's nothing to set in it, so there are no real proportions in it. Now, six tablespoons of melted butter. Six tablespoons of butter melted. Where's my spoon? That's what a handy dandy. I am using margarine because I have it and it needs to be used up. And yes, I know this isn't a measuring spoon, but I use this spoon. I make this cake all the time and I use this spoon to do that measuring so I know what it has to look like if you i make it for the first time. Measure it. That's four, five, and six can be a bit light on. Okay. Oh, I put the wrong thing in the microwave. Melt. One cup of milk. Single recipe is two cups of milk, so we're doubling it to one cup of milk. There it goes. Some of my handy dandy homemade vanilla. Smells really good. We made this batch about mm, two months ago. It smells so good. So, so good. We were able to get, there goes the butter. We were able to get fresh vanilla beans from Hindustan. bit of a stir to get it started. Oh, ouch, that is hot. In goes the butter. Give it a mix up. So you can see and mix, mix, mix. Give it a mix, get the butter in and mixed in because I don't want to add the eggs while the butter is hot because they will cook. But I can put the eggs into this bowl. And two. I'm not checking them. Normally I would crack them into a single dish individually and check them. I'm not doing that. And I lucked out because there's no rotten eggs. Give them a bit of a break up. It helps them combine into the batter better. Okay. And into the batter it goes. OK. 
I've done the sugar, I've done the eggs, I've done the butter, and I've done the vanilla. It's running off through my head. Make sure I put everything in. Because there's nothing worse than getting halfway through a recipe and realising, for whatever reason, you've forgotten to put something in. These were big eggs. Three might have done the job. Doesn't matter. This is really easy hand mix batter. You don't need to use a mixer to do this. There are no lumps in this. It's nice and smooth. It smells really good with that vanilla in it. And they are perfectly plain. Now, perfectly plain suits us because then when I ice them, I can put, hmm, I can go a bit crazy and put something fancy on them if I want to. Let me do a bit of a clean up before we. Um, measure out into the things the oven's just gone off so that's really good it'll be ready to pop in nothing on the bottom i have to say clear bowls are really good for seeing if you've missed anything on the bottom okie dokie get this over here just gonna check the pump Bubbling away nicely. Okay. Try. Can you see what I am doing? Here we go. Where's my ice cream scoop? Now I'm using the handy dandy ice cream scoop because it gives an even amount of batter in each cupcake paper. Even find it easier to do this. It also makes um, filling the cupcake papers easier, faster. Wonder how many we'll get out of this batter at 12 so far we should get at least 24 but i'm expecting to get probably 30 is what i'm hoping for it'll double up it doesn't matter because it's a bit skint okay move those out of the way bring this tray the pressure cooker starting to come up to pressure which is really good once it has it will start the countdown to cook when that's done when the pressure cooker is done i'll show you a nifty way to actually shred the chicken this makes it so simple for tacos enchiladas burritos um, chicken soup chicken curry chicken salad sandwiches it's such an easy way to shred the chicken only take literally take seconds yep here it comes it's going to start the countdown any minute now okay well we're not going to get as many out of this batter as i thought i would it's a bit of a bummer anyway um 
when I put them in the oven, they're going in at 180. Normally, they would take about 20 minutes. Today is a really weird day. It's quite warm, but it's very humid. Um, in fact, we've been raining, so uh, it's quite, quite damp and humid. So that means that they might take a little bit longer because the weather really does affect your baking. Now, I'm going to use just the spoon to do the last one. Everything out of there. Put you down, scrape my bowl. And you can just go. It looks perfectly just enough to fill that one. Excellent. Pressure cooker's coming up, pumpkin's boiling. There we go. Okay, these go into the oven after I clean up the tray so that I don't have to scrub it too much after they're cooked. Okay, into the oven they go. timer for 20 minutes and see how they are at the end of the 20 minutes now one of the things I always do um, as I cook I clean up so I'm just going to pack some of this stuff away then I'll get the vacuum sealer out and we'll vacuum seal this pumpkin up to go in the fridge Margarine and milk away first. Take these over to the dishwasher. My favourite household appliance. Bench down, get out the knife, get a sharp knife, and start chopping this pumpkin in smaller pieces because I will pack it in um, meal sized portions. Change the board so it's not quite so clappy for you. There we go. Won't make quite so much noise. Now, this pumpkin has really nice skin on it, not many blemishes, it's nice and smooth, so I'm leaving the skin on the pieces that are going to be roasted. This roasted pumpkin skin is actually quite delicious, and all I do is give it a scrub and then rub it with some vegetable oil and... Sprinkle it with salt and put it into a hot oven to roast. Um, I usually do it in a um, what I call Pyrex casserole type thing on its own because the potatoes and stuff. It takes a bit longer with the skin on it. Tastes so much better. Right now, these pieces are big and chunky so they can get cut in half. These are some that were done before. Ones are right. Ones are right. Ones are right. Ones are right. 
This one's huge. Thomas has to chop that down. Sorry about that clacking. Skinny bits, chop these into small bits. So they can go in the oven. And that big piece, we'll, I'll leave that big piece as it is. I'll leave that big piece as it is. And it can be for soup, okay, but it'll still get um, put in the fridge. Okay, I'll be back in a second. I just have to go and get the vacuum sealer and the bags. Give me one minute. Talk amongst yourselves. Okay, there's the bags. Let me get the machine. Waiting for the pressure cooker to come down in pressure. Here we go. I'm sure you've all seen me do this. Pretty easy. Pile it into the bags. Put it through the vacuum seal. Okay. So there's four of us. One, two. Skinny piece. One, two, three. One, two skinny pieces too. Sorry, oh, lost you. There we go. Back again. Hey, too much going on here, isn't there? But we've got two. I'll put five in every one, then Hannah comes home and she's got covered too. And if she's not, then some for my lunch the next day. Like that. Sound like a plan because it does to me. It's like, oh, there we go. Perfect. All right, they're ready to be vacuum sealed. Let me get rid of this. Let me check the pumpkin. Not quite, but it'll be done in a minute. All right, now to vacuum seal, if you've not seen this handy dandy gadget before, this is my food saver. And I would normally have it up where you are, but no room. That's okay. Pop it in. Hold it in place, lock it down. Vacuum seal. Now this vacuum sealing veggies like this keeps in the fridge for three weeks easily 
when we go camping, this is how I do all our veggies and I will do roast packs. So there'll be two pieces of pumpkin, um, an onion, some carrot. If I've got parsnip, parsnip will go into it um, and potatoes um, for our campfire roasts. I'm just going to do these. You can come along right here. So does anyone else vacuum seal their veggies like this? Keeps them for ages in the fridge. It really, really does. Just waiting for it to seal. And I'll show you. I can do the rest later. Because you don't need to watch me do all of it. Okay. See how nice that can around? No air in there. They're very little. They're vacuum sealed. So they will stay fresh in the fridge for weeks. Really, really easy thing to do. We'll turn that off and I will move that out of the way. Now that you know what it's like. I will also plug you back in so that you don't go flat on me. That would be a disaster, wouldn't it? I'd hate it to be halfway through, we're almost finished, and the laptop goes flat. That would be a disaster. Okay, the um, pumpkin soup is almost done. I just stuck a knife into the pumpkin. So what I will do is get my handy-dandy trivet turn the gas off right. like so let it stop boiling which will take a couple of minutes not long but a couple of minutes because it's pretty darn hot and then i'll show you how i use the stick blender to make it super duper creamy sorry just moved you without even warning you here we go again okay stick blender Question. I had it the other day. Where did I put it? Not back where it belongs, obviously. Oh. Huh. Okay, I won't show you because I can't find it. How can you lose a stick blender? Oh, I know why. Because I did move it. Okay. This is what happens. Did I just pop up out of nowhere? This is what happens when you reorganise your kitchen. Stick blender is down here. It used to always live in that corner cupboard. Now it lives here. Okay. Don't mind me. See, it's a real video. It's a real day in the life of or cooking with me. It's always an adventure. Nothing's ever, ever the same. Okay. All righty. Lid off. Ah, delicious. Smells really good. Put that in the sink. Get another pot holder. It's going to be super duper thick and creamy. Ah, oh, yum. Okay. All right. Let me see. Oh, will I move the pot or will I move you? It might be easier to move you guys. So hang on. We're going for a ride. But that's what the soup looks like at the moment. And I fogged you all up. Didn't mean to fog you all up, but I did. Okay, stick blenders in. On. Here we go. Thank <laughs> you. 
fogging up here. I'm going to take my glasses off. still say that yum yum bubble gum I don't know if they do I don't know if they have bubble gum anymore do they my kids were never allowed to have it but it's made a mess very good okay let me just run this to the sink and give it a quick rinse off so that it's easier to clean later Okay, guys, this soup is just lovely. A beautiful colour. Beautiful, beautiful colour. Shame it's not tea time. Let me get the soup ladle. I'll put some in a bowl. Let's see what it's like. It is just gorgeous. Cake's doing. Cakes are looking good. Okay, let me just pop some. I had parsley to sprinkle on the top, I would. Ouch. It's hot. I just lost the foot off the trivet. So, look at that. How deliciously good is that? Hey. Nice. I taste it because it smells really, really good. And it was just made with, and it's hot. So let me tip you back a bit. You can see what's happening. Perfect. Oh, yum. Mm, they're hot. Okay. That's my afternoon tea. All right. When that cools... I will put it into a container and pop it into the fridge and we'll have that tomorrow. Now let's see if the pressure cooker is de depressured yet. Just about. I haven't got a dish cloth handy. Yes, I have. So we can get the air off it. And if the pressure cooker is um, depressurized, let that come off there. I will bring the pot over because and show you how I um, do um, shred the chicken because it's really really easy to do it this way. Yeah. There we go. Pot. Oh my! <laughs> Smells delightful. It's a wonder the boys out here. Uh, out going, oh, what are you making? What are you cooking? Sounds really good. Okay. It's just got pumpkin on it. So now, never mind if the chicken's got pumpkin. Cool. Now, the chicken is still, can I lift it? Still hold fillets like that. They are cooked through. The knife just went. Pachoom. So, what I'm going to do. To make a big noise again sorry but you know someone wanted to see me cook this is how i cook it's certainly not glamorous i'll never make master chef or my kitchen rules or anything like that but taking my hand blender putting it in being very very careful because this is very very hot i am holding it still Putting it onto one, turning it on. Okay. 
put in the chicken. Three. Okay. Shred the chicken up beautifully. There's one piece that won't go. Usually much faster than that, but you know, glasses are fogged up again. Um, I'm putting it, you're watching it, you're watching what I record. I don't change anything. Ouch, 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 hot, hot, hot. So I will show you. There goes the oven, the shredded chicken. I need another little bowl. Oh, this is tonight, when I? We did this with a piece of beef last weekend. See? Can you see how perfectly shredded that is? Fork tender. Absolutely beautiful. And it tastes amazing. You just get a little, a little shred. I don't want big shreds. I want little shreds. Because it's hot to taste it. But I taste it. We did it with beef last weekend. Oh my goodness. It was so, so good. Let me try. Mm. Mm. Yep. So, so good. So that's my version of shredded chicken for street tacos or enchiladas or burritos or whatever you, quesadillas, whatever you want. It doesn't even have to be Mexican. And all I did was, you remember? Chicken fillets, tin tomatoes, onion, seasoning, which was my taco seasoning. It's just amazing. This is going back in the pressure cooker to cool down a little before it goes in the fridge. And it will be, um, and it will be, portioned out for three dinners for us when we have it tomorrow night i've got little tortillas little mini tortillas so there'll be a spoonful of the chicken a spoonful of whatever coleslaw i can um come up with with the veggies that we have and some cheese and sour cream if i've got salsa made I might have salsa in the freezer we'll have salsa with it too they will be delicious they will be delicious now the oven has gone off let me see if the cupcakes are done i won't be a moment need another pop me Ooh. and the cupcakes are done so cracks out okay cracks out chicken beaters and knife and this can all go over here Get rid of this messy cutting board. And we'll get ready to empty some cupcakes out. When they're cool, I might ice them. I might just leave them plain. My crew don't really care whether the cakes are iced or not. They just tend to like cake. Okay, I like cake too. There we go. Um, all roughly the same size, which is nice. This one rose up a bit more. So I drip more in it. Um, that goes there. Shh. 
I'm glad I took my jumper off before we started. It is warm in this kitchen. Between having the gas going, the heat off the pressure cooker, the oven going. Hi. And it is... Oh, it's 14 degrees outside, so it's quite a warm day. Well, warm considering what we've been having. All right, guys. There you go. That's what's cooking in my kitchen this week. I don't know whether I'll make this a weekly a weekly event or not. Let me bring you up again. I may, I may not. Because, you know, cooking isn't really my thing. Um, I'm inclined to... Like quick and easy, no fuss, super, um, super cheap. So the pumpkin soup costs about was about dollar fifty. That will give us um, it will give us lunch tomorrow, and then I might because it will thicken up with the potato starch in it. I might tomorrow afternoon after lunch put maybe another two cups of water or if I can start, find some veggie water in the fridge I'll put that in and thin it down again for more meals the chicken shredded chicken the chicken would have been six dollars it was four chicken breasts so that's a kilo so that's six dollars seven dollars fifty because I used um no uh, six nine dollars because they use two tins of tomatoes the onion was from when i got them for 50 cents a kilo so 20 cents maybe 10 cents for the onion and so what am i up to nine nine dollars ten and taco seasoning which is you know maybe 30 cents 35 cents so under ten dollars and that will do us for three meals three meals of street tacos so that's a pretty um pretty budget friendly meal even if we said three dollars fifty a meal for the four of us that's still pretty budget friendly by the time we added in um coleslaw which would be made from veggies that we have um a little bit of cheese sour cream or sat or yogurt whatever i've got and the tortillas probably that would be about five dollars fifty five dollars fifty a meal total so that would make it it's four of us it's a dollar twenty five a dollar thirty seven per serve so it's not super cheap, but it's not super expensive either. Um, and the cupcakes, well, they're frugal, 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 frugal. The margarine was given to me, so it was free. The eggs I had to buy and the flour and sugar I had to buy and the vanilla I make. So there you go. But they're still cheaper than buying them. So that's what's going in my kitchen today. If you've stuck with me this far, thank you. It's been yeah, been a while, about an hour, I think. So that's a long time. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do. It, it helps YouTube, but it helps us, helps our channel, and it helps you. And you know what? It helps random strangers who are looking for budget-friendly meals or, or wanting to know how to live life debt-free, cashed up and laughing. Because they'll search for us and we will pop up if we get those likes and we get those subscriptions. So if you haven't liked us, hit that thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Then the little bell. You can choose how often which videos you want to see, the live ones or recorded ones. You want to see them all. You want to see personalized ones. You can choose. And if you know someone who might like this video, there is a share button down there. Please share it because, again, it, it helps our channel but it will help your friend too. We don't harass them. All they do is get the link. It's up to them entirely if they want to um, click on it and watch whatever's happening in that video. Okay, well, 
I am about to put the cakes out to cool, clean up my mess over at the sink, and then I'm going to make a cup of tea and sit down. Have a great week, everyone, and thank you for watching.